In this video, we're going to be using Ariane and Evans Ipricity, and we're going to be comparing the Blackland Vector in Titanium to the Blackland Vector in Stainless Steel. Stay tuned. Hey there, folks, and welcome back for another video. I'm your host, CDB, and thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you. I think we have a really nice one for you today because we're using a soap. This is a brand new soap uh, yet to be released. This is a tester that Peter Charcals from A&E and the Shaving Shop Club sent me. This is Apricity or Apricity. I'm not sure how you say that, but boy, let me tell you, the scent on this, I really like it a lot. Uh, I'm going to read you some of the notes. Bitter orange, apricot, sandalwood, cashmere, oak moss, uh, coffee absolute, rose, uh, patchouli. Those are just some of the notes. And what I get is a very nice apricot on the top with some of that bitter orange. And then there's some rounding in it. So it's sweet, but it's not super sweet because it's blended and rounded nicely. Scent strength is right at uh, medium to medium high. And this is in the Kaizen 2E formula, which is fantastic. I'll put the ingredients for you there on the screen. He's added emu oil to Kaizen 2. Uh, one of the things about this formula too is it bursts into lather really, really easily. And you don't have to use quite as much product, which I'm a big fan of. Oh man, I like this, <laughs> this a lot. So there's a look at the soap if you're interested. This one's not quite as firm as his other uh, two e, Kaizen 2E formulas I've tried. A little bit softer, but man, I'm telling you, I used just a little bit and it burst into lather. Generally, the um, Ariane and Evans or Shaving Shop Club soaps uh, run about a little under $5 an ounce if you're in the club. So that is definitely a fair price on our cost chart. And I tell you what, I look forward to using this today because the scent is really nice for me. I like it a lot. Also today, and I know many of you have been, have been waiting for this moment because we're going to compare the Blackland Vector Titanium to the Blackland Vector in stainless steel. This one was sent to me by Blackland to try out and I've been using the heck out of it and really enjoying it. And today we're gonna to use them side by side and see what I think uh, in terms of a comparison. Let's get to the tail of the tape. The Vector Titanium is 330 US dollars. The stainless steel is 200 US uh, dollars. The weight on them the Vector Titanium, according to Blackland, 44.5 grams. And on my scale, I actually weighed it 1.6 ounces. And the stainless steel is 77 grams, according to Blackland, or 2.7 ounces uh, on my scale. So you can definitely feel that the stainless steel is heavier. However, the Vector has a little bit of weight to it. The weight on these razors are more so in the handle than the head because the heads are super Super thin, Blackland lists both at five out of 10 in aggression. I think I would bump that up a little bit personally. I'd say it's six to 6.5. It's an efficient razor, fantastic shavers, whichever one you get, in my opinion, I've used them both um, quite a bit. I wanna show you one thing, because before, when I've seen uh, folks using the Vector, sometimes they'll take it apart and they get confused on loading. And the one of the things I wanna call your attention to is always, let me unscrew the titanium here, by the way, in each razor, I have a uh, Feather Professional blade, brand new. So when, when loading the Vector, if you look at the razor here, let me pull that off. The front end is mostly flat and the back end is rounded. So if you always keep these, see the rounded edges? If you always keep those towards the back and you point the blade towards the front, I'm just gonna lay it in here and then I'll show you. And it's got pins to hold the blade in very nicely. I'll show you in just a second when I drop that in. Like so. See the pins? How it holds the blade in? And then also when you put it back together, you want the rounded edges to go to the back. And of course, the pin holes are going to go down on the pins. And no problem. If you always think about rounded corners to the back of the razor, you won't have any problem. I know some people have taken it apart before and they're like, oh, which way do I put it back together? And the easiest way to remember rounded corners to the back and you are good to go. All right, enough yapping, let's get into the shave. Today's video might go a little bit longer because we're doing this comparison. I have slightly under 24 hours growth. You can see a little of that salt there, at least I hope you can. And let's get into it. This is plain water here. Let's get involved with the Ariane and Evans Apricity. We're using the A&E synthetic brush, which I like to use. And look at the sheen on that lather. Kaizen 2E, great formula and I like the fact that you don't have to use as much product. That is nice for me. One of the reasons I stopped using some soaps is because I would have to keep adding product and adding product and adding product when bowl lathering. 
And it was just really a pain in the rear. And I was like, that's just not enjoyable for me. So I'm not gonna do it. Life is too short not to enjoy your shave. So regardless of what brand it is, if you don't enjoy it, just, just find some brands that you really do enjoy and use it like, like Ariana and Evans here for me. It's a brand that I enjoy a lot. It lathers well, it holds hydration well. Uh, I don't think very many people make quality arguments against Ariana and Evans, probably the best formulation on the market, or at the very least, it's it's one of uh, one of the, many people feel it's the, the best formulation on the market. I wouldn't argue with you if you say that. I like many other formulas too, but this one is really good. And the 2E is the best yet, in my opinion. And you know me, I'm not one of these people that's, you know, constantly worried about new formulas and adding a bunch of stuff, you know. In, in fact, sometimes it gets on my nerves. <laughs> but it's kind of hard to deny that this one is really nice. I actually prefer it over the original Kaizen and Kaizen 2. I don't know. I, for some reason, I just don't have to use as much product. And, and that's great. That increases the value. So, you know, it's always something to consider. How much soap do you have to use to execute your shave? And so... If you have to use twice as much, then the value goes down. And there are some soaps that are very good soaps on the market. But for the way I lather, I have to use twice, three times as much product. And I just don't use them anymore. Because <laughs> you know? I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be aggravated with this. Anyway, we're going to use the stainless steel vector on the right side. And we're going to use the titanium on the left. And let's, uh, let's get our first few strokes in on this side. Now let's go over here. You can definitely feel the weight uh, difference. There's no mistaking that part. Definitely difference in weight. Efficiency to me feels dead on the same on both. Um, using them side by side there. And I'm not gonna do the uh, entire shave using both hands at the same time, but in order to feel the efficiency, I'm just trying to Yeah, that feels the same. Both cutting very, very well. All right, let's uh, rinse them off. And then we'll we'll do the stainless side first and then do the titanium side on the other. Big cost difference. So if you're, you know, if budget is paramount to you, you know, the stainless might be the offering that you shoot for. If you want a razor that's a little bit lighter, maybe titanium. Um, I will say right now, if heavier razors it is your preference generally, you're going to want to go for the stainless steel. And it is a phenomenal shaver, the stainless steel. So I don't think you're gonna miss out. If you like, if you want a little more heft and you want the razor to feel a little more substantial, you're not gonna miss out by choosing the uh, stainless, in my opinion. It's a terrific shaver. I love it. Now let's go to the TI over here on this side. And that feels fantastic too. The main difference that I feel is just the weight. Efficiency, they, they seem very, very similar to me. So I don't think it's gonna make a world of difference efficiency wise. And you can see, you know, definitely cutting well. But uh, either way you go, I think you're getting a high quality razor, innovative razor with that slim head. And it is one of my favorite razors to use, period. The Vector, and you know this, if you've watched the channel, I drone on about the Vector all the time. You know, people know that. <laughs> but, you know, when you like something, you like it, and that's all there is to it. And uh, I tell you what, in my opinion, whether you're getting the stainless or titanium, you're getting a really good razor. And also in my opinion, the best Artist Club safety razor ever made that I have tried. Fantastic. So pass one, fantastic. The soap quality, top notch. The razors, top notch. Um, I mean, what a time it is to be a traditional shaver. <laughs> it's just having access to such great equipment is, a, it really is a blessing. And I'm most grateful to be able to try out this kind of stuff because it is a lot of fun to try different things and I've tried, I've had the opportunity to try so many different things over the years and 
you know, at least form somewhat of a learned opinion through trying many, many things. You know, you sort of develop a, a depth of knowledge there, having used all these razors and soaps. And um, so I have a pr pretty deep um, sort of catalog of things I've used to sort of draw from, to compare and, you know. Now, one thing that happens though is I'll get questions all the time while, where someone will ask, how do you compare the vector to the carbon razor? And you can't. You cannot compare an artist club style razor to a DE razor. They're just not the same type of razors. They're not the same type of blades. And I know p people ask those questions a lot and I'm like, I, I can't. Um, they're just too different. It's just like comparing a gym style razor to a, a razor like this. They're just so different that I don't think it's a fair comparison to either razor to compare. So typically I will just compare a DE razor to a DE razor or a, uh, you know, artist club style razor to an artist club style razor and so on and so forth. Because the blades in the artist club style razors are wider, they are thicker, and generally they last longer than, than DE. DE uh, blades are much more thin and flexible, whereas the artist club blades are not. And again, the, the blades that I'm using today are two brand new Feather Artist Club Professional Blades. It's kind of a pain to do these comparison shades because you've got to use two blades and then you've got to keep up with how many shades are on them. But, you know, let's face it, we're enjoying it. So it's worth the enjoyment. And I have been asked, you know, how these compare. And honestly, here's what it comes down to for me. I don't even have to finish the shave. I can tell you right now. In inefficiency, they feel very similar. It comes down to do you prefer more weight or less weight? And it's that simple for me. Both of them are extremely well made, so no difference there. So actually, uh, two factors, I would say. Let's, let's put it this way. Cost and weight. Both well designed, both well executed. So if you prefer less weight in a razor than, than uh, titanium, although more expensive, if you, if you prefer more weight, stainless steel, less expensive. So ultimately you have to make that choice. But if you really don't like light razors, then I would stay away from the titanium. But because it is definitely lighter than the stainless. There's just, there's no getting around that. Now for me, I like them both really, really well. And I think what I'm going to do is buy a, uh, I think I'm going to buy an open comb plate for the stainless and uh, because I've never tried the open comb and I'm going to see how I like that. But I don't think the titanium renders your stainless steel obsolete. And I've said that before in videos and I'll say it again today. I don't think it makes it obsolete. I think for the people who like titanium, for the people who like the, um, the feel of titanium, whereas you get some weight, but not too much weight. It's not as light as aluminum. So aluminum sometimes can feel so light that it, you know, it almost doesn't feel like a razor, you know. Um, it's too light, but titanium gives it just enough weight to, to where it still feels like there's some substance to it, but it, does, it doesn't go aluminum light, which for some people is no problem at all. And for some people just don't like aluminum razors because... They find them to be too light and they tend to press down. Now with the Vector, um, I don't think you need to press down whether you're using titanium or stainless steel. You know, what you do is you keep it in contact with the whiskers and it will cut them. You don't really have to bear down whichever one you're using. All right. Uh, the soap, fantastic. And I don't know if you can see that, but down in the bottom there, there's still plenty left over. So I am really pleased with the Kaizen 2E and that I think you're probably getting better value because you don't have to use as much soap, or at least I think I've used two or three of the Kaizen 2E now, and that's what I'm finding. Um, so that is very nice. I, I found that um, if you're having trouble with some of the softer, really soft soaps, like uh, examples that come to mind are Zingari Man, um, Gentleman's Nod, maybe the Cardinal Base, you may want to try to bowl out of those and get a better result. I was very frustrated with those soaps because 
I would keep to have to add product and add product and add product to get a reasonable amount of lather the way I bowl lather. And if you want to see that, you can look at the videos below. I will also say that about 99% of the soaps on the market <laughs> respond well to the way I bowl lather. Tutorial below. But there are some soft soaps that they just, I have to keep adding product and adding product and adding product. And that is annoying to me and I don't want to do it. And so if you're in that 1% that you don't respond well to my method, then I just don't need it. You know, that's, that's a personal choice. It doesn't mean that those are um, bad soaps by any stretch of the imagination. They are very good quality soaps, but the lathering process for me, not enjoyable. And so I don't use those, but I would recommend that if you come across a really soft soap that when you're bowl lathering it, it just, it's not coming around for you and you find yourself adding product over and over and over. Uh, face lather that one and see if you get a better result because I think some soaps are just better face lathered, but it's a pretty low, like I said, um, I've used a ton of soaps and almost every soap that I try responds well to my methods. And so that's why I do the same thing all the time. Um, and if it doesn't work, I'm like, meh, I don't need to use that soap. You know, it's that simple. You're not really missing out because there's tons of soap on the market. So don't allow yourself to be aggravated. Like if you do, if you want to do things a certain way and uh, a certain brand doesn't work for you, just use something else. It's no big deal. And it doesn't mean you're crapping on anyone else's product or anything like that. It's just, hey, this one isn't a good fit for me. And so there's nothing wrong with making those um, judgments and spending accordingly. And that's what I do. And so it's rare that I get soaps that sort of fall into that... Uh, category where I just kept keep adding product and adding product but but it has happened a couple of times and I just make adjustments accordingly. The Takaisen 2E uh, does not fall into that category thankfully because if it did in this case I'd tell Pete hey Pete man come on let's let's tighten it up a little bit let's firm it up a little bit and thankfully generally speaking with Kaizen 2E he has firmed the base up a little bit which I like I'm just not a fan of uh, super goopy and soft soaps. I just don't find them as enjoyable. Now, some people really like softer soaps, and that's okay. But generally speaking, the value of a really soft soap is not the same. It's not as good as something that's a little more firm. And I have uh, pretty much you know, established that through using tons of soaps over the years. And you can just tell, you know, you get more out of a... A firmer base, generally speaking. So the cost you're paying, um, you get more mileage. Sorry for the stomach growling this morning. <laughs> but anyway, you know, my cost chart per ounce is just, it's super general. And it's not specific to the type of soap I'm using. So, you know, it, it's just a general benchmark. It's not dead on. And I will say absolutely that if the soap... If the soap is super soft, then that chart's going to be off and it's going to be, um, the value will be a little bit less than, you know, per ounce. Now, if you get something like a triple milled soap per the amount you use volume wise, you're going to get probably a lot more out of it. So if I take like a Saponificio Veracino soap, the cost per ounce. It would be misleading because it's pretty pricey on a per ounce basis, but it will yield most likely more shave. So those are things to think about when you're looking at prices of soap. But the first thing I would do is if you know it's super, super soft on the verge of cream, the value is going to be a little bit less. So keep that in mind. That's what I recommend. And so when you see in there, the soaps are five, six dollars an ounce, and then they're also super soft, it's more like the, the soap in actuality is for more like $7 an ounce, you know, per, on a per shape basis, the value is less. Let's put it that way. So keep that in mind, make your own judgments. I can only tell you, you know, from my experience that I've, I've definitely established that myself. All right, man, what a shape. Either way you go with these razors, just absolute winners. We got all winners today. <laughs> all right, let me rinse and then we'll come back, get into the post. Stay tuned.
And all right, we are back and off cam. We did a warm water rinse to remove the soap, and then we applied our PAA alum, no stinging on either side, so that was a super smooth shave. Following the alum, we did a cool water rinse and then toweled off with our Lancaster towel prior to applying the Thayer's. This is a cucumber witch hazel, magic, because it's made by witches. I had an excellent shave today with Ariana and Evans Apricity. This will be going on sale in a couple of weeks in the Shaving Shop Club and then outside the Shaver Shaving Shop Club to the general public probably a few weeks after that. Really nice scent. I love the scent. I love the quality of Kaizen 2E. It is fantastic. And I rinsed out my bowl with cool water just to show you how much soap is left in there. So I used about a half teaspoon, maybe a little over, and there's a lot of soap left over. So for me, so far, I found Kaizen 2E to be a better value. You don't need quite as much product. Uh, now, again, I've only used two or three uh, of that formulation so far, but so far I'm loving it. I think it's fantastic. I think it's a great value and a great soap. The Blackland Vector Titanium versus Stainless Steel. Who is the winner? You're the winner. And I say that because whichever way you go with the Vector, it is a fantastic razor. And it comes down to this for me. If you prefer more, more weight, less cost, go with the stainless, phenomenal shaver. If you prefer a little lighter and you want something that is titanium and it's a little more high-end, go with the titanium. Uh, either way, the shave to me is the same. Same level of efficiency as far as I can tell. You don't have to bear down with any razor. The only thing I'd warn you about, if you're averse to light razors and you prefer more heft, definitely go with stainless and you would want to avoid the titanium in that case. However, if you don't like heft, you know, it, it's to me, it's just a matter of weight because they're both manufactured brilliantly, fit and finish is great, and either way you go, it's a winner. Both of these razors are winners. I, I love both razors, I've used them both, and I get excellent shaves with either. I don't think I'd put one above the other in terms of the actual shave. Um, it just comes down to preference, what you enjoy feeling in your hand. More weight, less weight, it's what, it's what it comes down to for me. Brilliant razor in any event. Uh, of course, we used our Ariane Evans brush today and our Lancaster brush soaking mug and our Captain's Choice bowl. And we're going to finish it out today with the Club Mimosa and Melon, which has that melon uh, scent, the Stallion's uh, melon scent. And boy, I've had an excellent shave today. I know this one went a little bit longer than usual, but the comparisons take a little bit longer to do. And man, oh man, it's been worth it because ah, that Mimosa and Melon, I love that scent. It's fantastic. Anyway... Thanks to all of you for joining me. I really appreciate you. I can't thank you enough. It means the world. Um, in these very difficult times, being able to come in here and share the shaves and see your comments means the world to me. Thank you. I truly mean that. Until next time, I've been your host, CDV, reminding you, sure shave, do it your way. And as always, God bless.